cares. So put your goals that they're meaningful, but don't put your goals so far out like Charlie Brown that he's all frustrated because he cannot be a professional baseball player. This goal is too far out. It's a dream, that's correct. It's a dream, and from there he can work out how do you achieve this. What are the goals? Well, first you play in a little league, and then you're getting better, and you're going a lot of hitting in the, in the, in the cages. To, to, so there is goals to go and follow your dream. Question your progress. That's so important. A lot of time, we are not self-critical enough. You're going around and you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Yeah, is this really true? Are you doing really so good? So and this is where mentoring comes in. If you have people around you who give you a good check. And I always tell this story. As I was in biotech, I saw many, many CEOs who uh, sooner or later, I would say, drink their own Kool-Aid. They go out there and they constantly tell everybody, we as a company, we are the best, and we are doing this, and we are the champion. And they're doing this many years, and they're doing it over and over and over again. And you're seeing this, that the point is coming where they really believe that they are the greatest. I always tell the story from my old CEO. I almost was fired because I wrote this um, Nature and Microbiology Review, and I didn't put his 100 patents in there. And, and he almost really fired me because he said, Martin, how can you publish this? And look, none of my patents are in there. I said, Jay, this is a research article. Your patents are not so important for, for this. Almost the wrong things because he felt that he invented this field and he needed to be present in this nature review paper. It went all the way that I had to call nature and tell them, look, I'm sorry, I need to pull this article or you're putting this Pat, this, this patents on there, and that's the reason at this, at this specific article you see suddenly a lot of patents lined up at the end because they wanted to have this article. But he, he was drinking his own Kool-Aid. He suddenly believed that he's the world champion. He invented it all. So he missed this, that he double-checked and see what is my progress. So this is where mentoring is so important. Talk to people, ask them, hey, tell me how I'm doing. Do you think it's okay? What can I do better? That's what this group can do, and what we all need to do. I say, look, there's another saying, which is so true, the higher you get in management, the more lonely you become. Because a lot of times, people do not come in my office and tell me, what you're doing? Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? People are not doing this anymore, because they feel there is this authority or whatever. And this is so bad, because suddenly, you're seeing this, that management lifts up, off, and makes decisions in a vacuum where people like yourself say, oh my God, are they drinking their own Kool-Aid? This is exactly what it is. You're missing the feedback mechanism. And this starting out by checking where are you, what have you done, what is your progress, <coughs> and you can sit again, sit down, and the way when you have your state focused thinking time, so on your lawnmower or on your fitness studio or wherever it is, there you think about this. How I'm doing? What is my progress? And be honest to yourself. It doesn't help you if you come away and say, oh, look at me, I'm wrong. Yeah, sometimes it's good, but a lot of times be critical and ask people around you to help you to really evaluate where you're standing. <laughs> this, is a, this is a the most important friends. And tell you, I will say this, if people come and criticizing me and help me to, be, to become better, this is, at the end, the most, most important people around you. It's not always pleasant. I know it's sometimes really tough. If you come in and you're getting this kind of talk, how horrible you are, I know it's tough. It's not easy. But this is the only way to move to the next level and help you to become better. Benefits from shared thinking. So another very important, because I'm seeing this a lot of times, that you're going out there and then you say, I want to do this plan, and you're disappearing in your office. And then a week later, you come out, da 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 da, and you present to your team the research plan. That's not how it should be done. I know it's tempting because a lot of times, especially if you're a big picture thinker, you are, might be ahead of everybody around you. I know this is a danger, but. Shared thinking is one of the most critical elements, in my opinion, especially in research. So let's look at this for a little bit. 
Good thinkers, especially those who are also good leaders, understand the power of shared thinking. Shared thinking is faster than solo thinking. So if you want to learn something, so what do you do this? You could take a book and disappear and read, and then you come out, or you just team up with somebody who has done it. So when we, we as we bought this farm, so my wife, she decided um, that she wanted to get chickens. So we, we never ever killed a chicken in my life. So, and I said, I'm, I'm not getting involved. So my wife, she's taking this book, and you know, the night before Halloween, so we decided it's time to, to slaughter our first chicken. So, Sibylla, my wife, she's really out there. So, okay, so, okay. And then, and then we, we learned the really hard way how to, to butcher a chicken. It was, well, hindsight pretty funny. It would have been much easier if I say, well, Ken, you might have a chicken. Hey, Ken, come over one night, I buy you a beer. Let's show me how are you are doing this. I would have been much faster in, in the success. It might have been also easy for the chickens. But so that we are losing this a lot of times. We are not using this shared thinking. So these days, but our young generation, when I, when I look at my son, 16 now, and he one day was 14, he said, I want to build a catapult. I said, oh, that's interesting, cool. So, so what he has done now with all this new technology, I, I would have disappeared, it would have taken a book and read, and then you go back, and well, he just looked at YouTube. And he had this completely worked out by the people showing him exactly what to do, and he built this, this catapult based on a YouTube video. Well, it's a new way, but it falls on the shared thinking. It's a much faster way because a lot of times we're not only reading, we're seeing it. It's, it's a, a faster way to take up information. Shared thinking is more innovative than solo thinking. And Albert Einstein, you can read this yourself, had this great quote there. And that's so true. You're bringing these different qualities of people together and everybody has strength in different areas. So link them together and you will be much more innovative. It will be faster and you create brand new ideas where you might not have never thought about this because we all have certain restrictions in the way we're approaching things. The more people you have around you, the easier it is to come up with a great idea. Shared thinking brings more maturity than solo thinking. Again, it's very experienced. So you, you're building onto the experience of your team. So you have all these people who have done it perhaps or have been in a similar situation. So incorporate them in the way you're doing this. Also, they avoid the blind spots in this area. Shared thinking is stronger than solo thinking. Again, two heads are better than one. We all know this, I mean, and so it's, it's very obvious. When they're thinking in the same direction, that's important. It can be destructive if you have somebody who is undermining you. And we come back to this one in a second as well. It's very important how you identify the team around you because it can be destructive. So you need to watch out for this. And shared thinking is the only way to have a great thinking. So, so you have, uh, let's say, people together and you need many ideas to come up with a great idea. So if you only have one, it might be good, but if it's getting great, you have several ideas and you're combining them and then you move forward as a team. How to encourage the participation of shared thinking? And that's now important. That can comes back how you're selecting the people on your team. Value the ideas of others. So you need to ask yourself when you're walking into this environment, am I emotionally secure? If you're weak, it's a problem that you can undermine other ideas because you're getting threatened by these ideas. You suddenly feel, oh my God, this guy wants to have my job. Oh, or other things are listed here. So it's so important that you are aware that you are a strong person because if you're weak, it might threaten your thinking. So if you, if you know this, you can react to this one. And then you can say, hey, I'm not scared about this. It's shared thinking. We want to do this together. Do I place value on people? That's also so important. If you're sitting across somebody and you say, oh, look at this idiot over here. There's no shared thinking happening because you feel you're not respecting this person. You think this guy can't tell me anything already. There's a joke there. So it's important that you have people around you and that you value them because otherwise you will not accept the ideas of these people. I might threaten you or you just throw them out already because you know, this, this joke cannot tell me anything. Very, very important. Do I value the interactive process? So you need to go, if you already go in there and you know exactly what you want 
then you not value the syntactic process because you don't want to deflect your ideas. You don't want to go a different way. You're not open to input. So it's important that you go in there with an open mind. You might have an idea. That's great. You want to sell this idea to the team. That's perfect. But don't think that it has to be your idea or not, nothing. This will destroy this process. So look, this is the little things, but I feel them, that they're really important if you go into a team meeting to, to go and check this before you go in this meeting. So I am scared. No, I'm not. I'm open to the process. And do I value the people who are sitting with me on the table? And look at value of people. We all know we don't, we don't have to be buddy-buddy with everybody. There's people we, we value very high, and we people who perhaps we value not as high. That's OK. But give everybody a fair chance. Again, treat people the way you would like to be treated. You want to have a fair chance, too. So give them a chance and see perhaps you're wrong. You, you might change your opinion. Move from competition to cooperation. That's also important. A lot of times what I'm seeing here is that we're approaching these team meetings with competition. I see, oh, this guy is, I have an idea, he has an idea, we applied to the same sponsor. That's, you're hearing this so many times. Not the right thing to do. You need to move away from competition. There's enough competition out in, in life. That's okay, I love competition. Don't create competition internally. Team up. Find ways to work with these people. Find the best teams. Work in the collaboration and cooperation, not competition. Have an agenda when you meet. That's also so important. A lot of times you're seeing these meetings and people sit around, okay, let's talk about whatever. That's, not, that's you losing time. It's not productive. Have an agenda because, you know, remember, we have a goal. We are driving a process. Go in there and make clear what you want to accomplish. You need to know when you go in this group meeting and you're doing the shared thinking what you want to get out. Because there is a danger when you have good minds together. You're creating this great bubble and the bubble moves and moves and moves and you're over here. But you need to be here. So you lost your goal and your target. This is the reason you need to have an agenda. Get the right people around the table. That's so important. You need to identify the strengths and the weaknesses of everybody around you. If you assemble a team, that's so critical. We will talk about this again in the next couple of slides. So get the right people together with you. Build onto the strength. Not everybody is a finisher. Everybody has different styles. Bring them together. So this brings me to the next book, Care of the Day. It's a very little tiny reading. And this comes back to this one. When you're having a team effort, you need to award people for what they're doing. Again, this is something we can do a better job. Because if you look at this, what awards or recognition have to be, to summarize it, has to be timely. Well, we suck in this area, honestly, a lot of times. So we're giving people awards nine months later. Well, this event is already long forgotten. Huge problem. Be specific. Don't award people and say, hey, you're a great man. Oh, what does this mean? Great man for what? what? So that's not how you praise people. Be sincere. <coughs> If you say, <laughs> thanks so much for writing this report, how is it great? You look like an idiot. It, it doesn't take serious. I mean, you feel you've wasted a great opportunity. And be prepared. I mean, this is so important. And again, the people say, how often should you give praise to people? I like this, what they're saying in here. When, when I'm not dealing with this, then my wife will say, well, you haven't told me a long time that you love me. Well, yeah, of course I love you. Yeah, but... How often is she, uh, did Sibylle tell me, well, you know, s stop it. You know, you told it to me now every day. Okay, that's enough. Uh, no, I'm not getting this. People like to be praised. People like to get recognition. And I also like um, this one, this saying what Mary Kay said. Everyone has an invisible sign hanging from their neck saying, make me feel important. That's exactly.